Hi, I'm Judy. And I'm Erling. And we're with TravelTrailSale.com. Today what we'd like to do is give you a tour of our current camper, which is a Grand Design Transcend 28 MKS. I will be giving you a tour of the inside, and then Erling will give you a tour of the outside. Uh, we'll talk about things we are looking for in our camper, things we really like about this camper, and just a few things maybe to watch out for. Our previous camper uh, was a Jayco 26 bunkhouse, which was a great camper. We loved it. Really loved it. Uh, but as our kids uh, became teenagers and we added a 65 pound black lab, we outgrew it. So we needed to find another camper. It had to be a a tow behind camper um, and also one that was no bigger than 32 feet or so. Um, so those were some of the restraints we had when we were looking for a camper. So things I really wanted in a camper, um, just a couple things I want to highlight from the outside is I like to keep things simple as my parents always taught me. So I just wanted one door did not want two doors to have to worry about securing or someone walking in on me when I'm in the bathroom or whatever. So one door. Um, I also like the steps that tuck in under the camper instead of folding into the camper. Um, and the other big thing um, for us was that we wanted just one slide and the slide had to be on the um, hookup side, not on this side of the camper because when you have your slide out, it feels like it takes up your outdoor space where you'd like to hang out. So those are some of the things we're looking for as far as the outside. Um, so come on and follow me and I'll give you a tour of the inside. I truly love this camper. I, I just, we fell in love of it. We fell in love with it right away. Welcome to the inside of our Grand Design Transcend. I absolutely love this camper and I'll try and hit some of the highlights for you. I think the two things I love the most about this camper are uh, the amount of space it has and the amount of counter space it has. Well actually I should say three things. The amount of storage space it also has. Because as we walk around you'll see that there is storage everywhere. So just to take kind of a quick tour around, here you have some built-in hooks, which are really nice. You can hang your hats, coats, jackets, dog leash, whatever. Here you have your stereo system. The one thing with this is your DVD player is built into your stereo system. And if you're sitting kind of on the other side in a recliner, the remote doesn't work. You actually have to be over here to get this to work something we learned <laughs> on one of our very first camping trips. Not a big deal, but something to think about. The TV is nicely situated here. You can see it from any angle. It does pull out. You can turn it. It's a good size TV. A lot of counter space. Love it. You can spread out. You can have quite a spread of food here. I don't think I've seen this much counter space in a camper this size, so this, I just fell in love with this. Lots of drawer spaces here. Cabinet spaces above. Just storage space everywhere. And just to top it all off, I did have even more storage. I bought a couple of small ottomans, you know, for extra storage. You can put your feet up on them. You can even sit on them. They're easy. They travel easy. Um, I just bought those at a big box store. So just nothing. A, a nice add-on. Again, lots of storage all around. One of the very nice things we like about this camper is that the heating vents are built into the cabinets. They are not in the floor, so you do not have to worry about debris, dog hair, food, who knows what, falling into your vents. So we really like that. The other thing that's really nice is that the access for winterization is right behind this panel. Very easy to access. 
which is also very nice. It does have an oven. Not all campers have an oven. I need an oven because even camping, I like to bake cookies, which my family, I think, appreciates. So I do like that it has an oven. It also has a nice large sink with a tall faucet and a spray that will pull out for easy cleaning. This camper also has a lot of windows and they are the traditional windows that will slide open all the way. So you can get a lot of fresh air, a lot of light into this camper. And they just slide very easily like that and then they slide closed. The refrigerator is just your standard camping refrigerator, but you can fit quite a bit of food in there. It does have a doggy door down here below for your best friend's food and treats and toys. Nice size pantry here too. You can store a lot of food here. So if you're going to be on the road for a while, you'll have space. <laughs> It does have the one slide out, which gives us all of this room. As one of our friends said, when he walked in, he's like, wow, you could do some ballroom dancing in here. So uh, the one thing with the slide out that you'll note is that if the slide is all the way in when you're traveling, it will block the refrigerator. So the only way to access food from the refrigerator when you're traveling is to have your slide, you know, to park and then take your slide out which may not always be convenient, so you may have to plan ahead, pack a cooler. So one thing to note, the slide will block your refrigerator. It has a really nice dinette, good size. We were looking for a regular dinette, not U-shaped, because when we sat in a U-shaped dinette, we did not fit. So it was not comfortable at all. So this dinette fits four adults very comfortably. It will make into a bed very easily and back into a dinette very easily. So that's very nice. Also has storage under the seats here. Storage everywhere. To make the dinette into a bed, pretty straightforward. You take the top off. Just set that aside. Take off these holes here and I just usually lay them down there. Then this tabletop will just slide into place. And then you'll bring your cushions out and lay them out. There you have your bed. Um, as I mentioned, lots of windows in this camper. They're all tinted. They do have the black shades so that it will block out light if you're trying to sleep, which is also very nice. Two recliners. You even have storage in the armrest. I'm telling you, everywhere you look, there's storage. Uh, these are just your basic recliners, not heated, no massage. Again, we were looking for simple, yet very comfortable, and this camper wins on all points. Here you have a couch that will fold out into a bed very easily and folds back into a, the couch very easily. The nice thing is when it's out as a bed, it does not block the door, it does not block the hallway to the bathroom, so you still have access to everything. So to make this couch into a bed, it's very easy. First, you would need to remove any decorative pillows. <laughs> then you remove the back cushions here. Set those aside for now. This part of the couch comes out. You just pull it out like this. Make sure the legs at the bottom are out. There you go. And then you just flip down this back of the couch like that. 
And normally what we do with the cushions is we, the back cushions, we just slide them under here just so that they're out of the way. So we've made the couch into a bed. It's fairly comfortable. One thing that um, our daughter commented on is that here where the, the back of the couch comes down, there is like this seam or kind of gap. It can be a bit uncomfortable on the on the back so what I normally do is just fold up a blanket and lay it over that to give it a little more cushion and then put the sheets and things over that um, so that's one thing to note um, about this this bed is this gap here might be a little bit uncomfortable the nice thing I like about this layout is it's very comfortable as I mentioned but it also is very um, conducive to conversation because of the way it's laid out. You can see each other. It's very easy to hang out and just talk and, you know, enjoy time together. So this space for us has been just ideal. And at one point we did have seven adults inside, big buffet on the countertop. It was very comfortable. We had a good time. There's storage above the couch too. Wherever you look, there's storage. We have our games up here, extra sheets, plenty of room for stuff up here. The camper does have one AC, which works very well for us. You can add a second AC unit in the bedroom if you'd like, but again, for us, we have found that this one AC unit is fine. It does the job very well. This I wanted to show you is kind of like the main control center. You have your control for your slide. Also, your awning is automatic. You can control it from here. Your water heater, your gas and electric, your water pump, exterior light and ceiling light. A little odd to have the light switches here for your ceiling light and exterior light, but um, you just get used to it. But it would be nice if it was by the door, but it's okay. I'll let that slide. <laughs> this um, is also a really nice feature of this camper is that there's actual, actually a hallway to the bedroom. We have found when we were looking at all kinds of campers of this size and layout that oftentimes you have to walk through the bathroom to get to the bedroom. There was no hallway. And I didn't like that so much. So when I saw that this camper actually had a hallway, I thought this is just the perfect layout. And it's a good size bathroom. It has a nice shower, it has your regular shower curtain, which I prefer over a shower door which is just more to try and clean and maintain so I just like your basic shower curtain it has storage on the wall over the toilet storage over the sink uh, decent size counter space and then even more storage under the sink The doors are secured during when you're traveling, but you simply unsnap those and they roll very nicely. And then when you're set to hit the road again, you would just snap it back to secure it. And then when you come through the hallway, you are back here in the bedroom, which is a good space. It does have storage over the bed, on each side of the bed, um, and also space to just lay your phone, a book you're reading, things like that. This camper does come with a full-size queen mattress. A lot of campers have a smaller queen size or camper size mattress. This is a full-size queen mattress. It's fairly comfortable, but we did add a three inch foam topper to it, which has made all the difference. It is very, very comfortable with that foam topper. 
There is storage under the bed for all kinds of stuff, whatever you want to put there. There's also this wardrobe here for even more storage. You can hang things. Right now we have all kinds of blankets stored in there. Has two more drawers down here. So again, everywhere you turn, there is storage in this camper, and I love it. We had this TV added um, as a feature, which is nice. The bedroom does have a door that slides. So if the kids want to go to sleep or watch something different or play their games, we can close that door and we can watch TV here very quietly. So that's our tour of our Grand Design Transcend the Inside. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll be giving you a tour of the outside. But in summary, I love this camper. Again, it's very comfortable. Lots of space for adults and your best canine friend. Plenty of storage. And it has really high quality features. So we love it. And we look forward to using it for many years to come. All right, we're going to walk around the outside of our Grand Design Transcend camper. I'll show you some of the key features. Here's the front. We actually have a power jack on here. You can just press a button using the power from the battery to, to raise and lower that, which makes hitching up a little bit easier. There's a, a two propane tanks. Keep in mind these are the smaller propane tanks. You can actually exchange this kind as well as fill them. Our last camper actually had significantly larger propane tanks. If you're out in cold weather, you may go through propane fairly fast. On the bright side, you can exchange these just about anywhere. On top of the propane cover is a port, which is really handy so that you can actually open that up and there's uh, access the top of the propane tanks to turn them on and off. We've got a bike rack installed on ours. This is the Arvika bike rack. There's a separate video on that as well as a blog post if you want to check it out. Uh, we've got a single battery on this one. There is room for more than one battery. We just have one for now. And then uh, we've got the brackets that we use to connect our stabilizer bars connected there as well. So let's walk around the rest of the camper. On this side of the camper is a storage compartment and if you open that up you're going to notice there is a magnetic latch which is really nice. Keeps the door open without having to, to do any kind of a latch or anything. It's just automatic. And just inside there's a light that's motion activated. So if you're coming into the campground after dark looking for things in here, the light will automatically turn on for you. And I really appreciate that. In this side of the storage, we tend to keep things like camp chairs, a lantern, and some tools. And of course, the crank we need to lower our stabilizers. We have manual stabilizers on here. It's not that big a deal. You simply connect the crank, and then you can turn that to raise or lower the stabilizers. These are pretty basic camper stabilizers. I almost wish there was something a little bit more substantial so that we could reduce the motion inside the camper as we're walking around. The other thing is I've seen some manufacturers starting to actually put a, a Velcro holder of some sort inside storage so that there's a designated place for this. It can get kind of lost in your other tools and toys. So it would be nice to have a place to, to designate for that and I may have to add one. We keep going around the camper. Judy did mention that with this particular camper, the Transcend 28 MKS, has just one entry door. Again, we prefer it that way, keep things simple. Some campers have a door that'll go into a bathroom or into the bedroom up front. Uh, we just like to keep it simple with one. And we've got these stairs. These stairs are nice, they are pretty robust and they fold up and you can see that the stairs actually stay outside the camper. Well you can imagine on a rainy day or people have muddy shoes and you're packing up to leave the campground, bringing stairs inside 
the camper, which is something some newer campers have. I just don't see how that could be a good idea. So we prefer this outside set of stairs. They're pretty stable. And there's a handle. It folds back for when you're traveling. Back out again to give you a good uh, handle to hold as you're entering the camper. Let's continue walking towards the back of the camper. You can see there's a power outlet here actually, which is nice if you set up and you have the awning out, some chairs out here. You may like to have some electricity to power, whether it's a radio or TV or other devices. There's a, a water fill here, as well as the grate for your hot water heater. And the part a lot of people like to talk about is the outside kitchen. So we're not huge users of outside kitchen. I do tend to do a lot of camp cooking, but we set up a separate uh, camp kitchen outside. This one we don't use too much. We were looking for a camper that actually didn't have an outside kitchen and really couldn't find one. Fortunately, on the Grand Design, it's a pretty basic outside kitchen. It does have a small refrigerator to keep your beverages cold. And there's a small two burner stove. If I open that up, you can see that there's actually a larger burner and a smaller one. If we put the windscreen in place so that now you're cooking, but you can see with the two burners like that, uh, one of the things we would like to cook outside would be pancakes. And I could, cannot put a rectangular griddle on this type of a cooktop. Unlike a Coleman cook stove or, or some of the other ones you may have seen. I did try and use it once. I guess you can heat a coffee pot on here or you could use a round cast iron skillet if you were going to make some eggs. But we typically don't use our outside kitchen much. So we're going to move on from that. Coming around to the back of the camper, a couple of nice things here. One is that there's a ladder. You can see it's, a, it's narrow and it's a vertical ladder, but it's still really nice to have. There's times when you're camping when you need to get on the roof. If you're bringing your slides in at the end of a, a camping trip and need to sweep off the surface of the slides, before you bring it in. Don't want to have leaves or other debris coming in through that. Uh, climb up the ladder and take care of it. You also have to clean the roof of the camper at least once a year, probably more, uh, and you'll need a, a ladder to do that. Now, this isn't the only ladder we have. When we camp, we bring a second ladder with us, a little giant. And you can check out my video on the little gi giant ladder that we use while camping. Uh, this is a nice, nice to have feature though. Uh, and then we also bring that one. The second thing to show on the back of the camper is pretty simple, it's a spray port. So it has a small port here where with a quick connect, you can connect a hose. This is in place of the typical outside shower you see on campers where you have a big rectangular box and a shower handle in it. I like this much better, it's simpler, and so again, you just plug a hose in here. The only thing I would have liked to have had is when you have the hose plugged in, some place to put the handle for the hose so you can actually use it as an outside shower. Right now, we just have to hang it off of the stairs or off the ladder. So let's keep walking around. Here we've got the electric connection. This is a 50 amp powered camper and so you see this very robust 50 amp power cable plugged in and not every campground has 50 amp so you may want to note that if you're say in a state park that has 30 amp power you may want to be careful in your power usage so you're not using everything all at the same time uh, but with the 50 amp power that allows you to have things like a second air conditioner that is an option that can be installed on this model. Underneath there is another stabilizer jack. And then you can see there's a, a gray water hookup here. This is the one that goes to the tank that's in the kitchen. So if you're doing your dishes and you uh, fill up the gray water tank, you'll need to connect to this sewer hookup in order to empty that tank. 
You also have the slide that's out. You can see about how deep it is. That actually provides an amazing amount of room inside. So we're glad to have this super slide uh, and it sure opens up things inside the camper. Continuing on, you can note that when the slide is out, it doesn't actually block the sewer hookups. Because here's the other set of hookups. So the power and the sewer are not blocked by the slide, which sometimes you see on, on different campers. This second sewer hose hookup is for your gray tank and black tank for the bathroom. And so if you are par uh, parked at a full hookup campground, you're actually going to need to have a second set of hoses and a Y valve so that you can connect both sets of sewer hoses up uh, to, to have for your sewer hose hookup. If you are at a state park and you're dumping on the way out, you may need to make two stops to, to dump. That can be a little bit inconvenient, but it's not that big a deal. And having the second set of tanks uh, for gray water really extends how long you can camp. Continuing on towards the front, there's actually another storage compartment. And this one's an important one because it has your universal docking station here. This is where you're going to hook up fresh water. So your fresh water hose hooks up here. You can actually see I've got a, a small flexible connector plugged into that one. And then the hose will come through this port in the floor. We run the hose through there, connect it to here, and then you have an option. There's a, a lever here if you want to be on city water. That means the water will be flowing to all the faucets in your camper. You turn it to city water. If you want to fill up your, your tank because you want to stay unconnected and still have water, you simply, simply slide that lever to fresh tank fill and you can fill up your fresh water tank. A few other things to note here, there is a battery shutoff. So if your camper is going to be in storage or not being used for a period of time, you can disconnect the battery and that helps it from continuously discharging and, and extends the life of your battery. There's an electric outlet here and the outlet for your cable TV if you're in a campground that offers cable. So this storage is really large. It actually goes all the way through to the other side. And you can see we have a few things that we keep on this side, like this is where we uh, will put our electric cords or our cable TV cord. So when that 50 amp cord comes off the back of the camper, it coils up and goes in storage. On this side, just finishing things off, there is a solar charge uh, station here. You can plug in a solar panel, like a portable solar panel. If you wanted to keep your batteries charged when it's in storage, that could be handy. We haven't had the chance to use that yet. So that wraps up the tour of the outside of our Grand, Des Grand Design Transcend 28 MKS. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching our video of the tour of the Grand Design Transcend 28 MKS. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd greatly appreciate it. And if we can answer any questions, check out the blog review of the Grand Design Transcend on TravelTrailSale.com. There's a comment feature and we'd be happy to try and answer your questions. Thank you!